Okay, we're going to go ahead and kick it off. So I don't know who wants to go first. Uh, Jillian, Kevin? I'll dive in. Yeah, thanks, Curtis. Appreciate it. Hi, everyone. My name is Jillian Wagner. I'm with Global Impact. I'm one of the three federation organizations that are going to be speaking with you all today. Very excited to be here. Oh, Curtis, you've got the back end view. You got to flip it. Oh, it's no. never easy to share PowerPoints. I, I don't know why. Give me a break here. Let's <laughs> see. But we're going to cover CFC 301 for nonprofits. Um, please feel free to put questions in the chat. We'll try to keep an eye on it. Um, really want to make sure that this is a useful session for all of you. Uh, use this as an opportunity to pick our brains, share with each other, all that good stuff. Um, Hello? Hello? Can yes. you Hi there. You've joined. Okay, great. Very okay. good. Wonderful. Uh, Curtis, next slide. So just to make sure that you're in the right breakout room, obviously there's two, one for federal employees, one for charities, but I just want to kind of um, set the stage that this session might not be for everyone. We want to make sure that this is really relevant to your organization and, and where you're at with your capabilities. So I kind of throw up some questions uh, on the screen here. So at least two out of six of these sound like you, sound like your organization, then it sounds like the 301 session is really going to be targeted to you. You've been in the CFC for a while and continue to generate over 20,000 in revenue definitely every year. Uh, maybe you have really strong brand awareness, strong brand recognition amongst general American donors. Uh, you might have a large enough fundraising team to really dedicate some resources to the CFC. Uh, you're not a small and mighty team. You're probably a very mighty team, but you've got the staff capacity needed to really kind of um, dive into some of these specifics in the CFC. Individual giving growth is, is a priority for your organization. This is really one where you want to take some time and invest some resources this fall. You have an opportunity with this audience of donors, or there's something about your organization that really uniquely aligns with a federal workforce, where it really makes sense to kind of tailor a lot of your time into CFC and, and think about that messaging. So if these sound like you, great. Glad to have you here. Um, if not, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to stay and, and, and learn and, and listen. We'd, we'd love to have you too. Next slide, I threw some of our session objectives, things that we're going to go over today. Curtis, if you could just, oh yeah, perfect. Uh, we're going to offer some new ways for you to measure success. We're going to offer three strategies to sort of accelerate giving in the CFC. And then we're really going to try to offer some examples and case studies of how CFC charities have implemented some of these strategies. And then I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Jen. Julian. Curtis, next slide, please. Thank you. So over the course of today's session, we are going to be looking at ways that your organizations can increase your success within the CFC campaign. And we know sometimes it feels like measuring success is a very nebulous thing especially when you and your team are already juggling so much. So metrics feels daunting. So overall, three benchmarks of success that you can look at and we'll be talking about where, how big is your market share among other like nonprofits? Are the, member, are the numbers of your donors increasing? And of course, is your revenue increasing? Is your return on investment remaining steady or is the return you're seeing growing, be it by one or more of the three benchmarks noted here? Curtis, next slide. May you live in interesting times. I think it's safe to say we all understand why that tends to be said as a curse. We've seen a lot of change very quickly in such a short amount of time over the years, and it has had a profound impact on everything. There's a lot that we simply cannot control, such as what the government does in terms of shutting down, elections, or natural disasters. We can only simply react and recalibrate when needed. However, what you can control is how you interact with your donors as it is so critical to your mission. And so is the strategic use of your staff and your resources that are available to you. Utilizing both will set you up for success against the unknowns that we simply cannot control. Next slide. So in today's sessions, we're gonna be talking about three different topics. We'll be talking about paid advertising, donor communications and special solicitations and how they can be best used to bring your organization more market share, more, more donors and more revenue. And I'll pass the torch though I know the Olympics are done unfortunately to Shalom. Hi everyone. 
Hello. Um, not an Olympian. I am uh, the social, <laughs> I do communications and marketing at CHC. I have a strong background in social media marketing. So I'm excited today to talk to you about paid advertising for the CFC. Um, next slide, please. So as we, as Jillian stated, there is a big part of this, this part, this portion, paid advertising that really requires a budget. Um, the difference between organic and paid, which are both options when it comes to marketing um, your nonprofit and marketing your campaign. Um, organic social marketing is free. It is generally what you do directly from your pages. It's, um, it's native is how we call it. Um, so those reach your followers, the audience that you have already curated. Paid social then allows you to target specific people and to reach an audience bigger than one you already have. So as we can see, organic marketing helps you to develop a long-term relationship with your audience. This is because these are people who follow you generally. You all, they already know what you do. You already have sort of a rapport with your followers. Um, again, it that it that marketing reaches people who already know about you, and it requires them to already know about you to receive that marketing. Um, most of your followers, however, are probably not CFC eligible, so it's recommended to not continuously blast your organic followers with uh, marketing content that's not relevant to them. Um, just, you know, to keep that relationship with the followers more positive instead of feeling like you're bombarding them. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, the most important thing when it comes to organic versus paid, regardless of your organization size or budget, organic social is free. And I think it's really, really wise to optimize organic social first. Um, whether or not you have a budget, it's not something that you should forget about and throw by the wayside. Um, then we have paid marketing side of things, which really is where we start to see big impact in terms of marketing. So paid marketing helps you to reach an audience that matches with your that matches with your message, but you don't have direct access to. Um, it use you can target specific audiences that share traits with people who do follow you. So being able to look at a group of people who you know care about your cause and care about your organization, and then being able to say, okay, I want to find people like this who I can show you know, my work to our organization, who I can expose them to, to then you know, get those people on your side. The other thing is that paid marketing is scalable, so you can set your own budget, um, and it's, it's pretty common that the results that you see are directly proportional to budget. The more money you put into things, often the more results, the, the more tar specific targeting you can do. Um, next slide, please. In terms of budget and creative, um, it's really important to plan for the CFC year round. Um, obviously the campaign season is a little smaller than year round, but it's really the kind of thing where if you want to see big results, it's gonna require big work you know, in the long term. Um, so announcing the dates of the campaign and reminders leading up to the opening of the CFC can be really helpful. Then throughout sending continuous reminders, um, acknowledgements once the campaign is closed, again, to maintain the relationship. So you're even the new audience that you might reach so they don't kind of feel discarded at the end of it. You know, we've brought you in, you've donated, you care about our cause now. Thank you for being part of us. Please continue and stay with us. Please continue to learn about what we do. Um, if you do have a limited budget, we do recommend prioritizing LinkedIn and meta platforms. LinkedIn is really great for specific targeting, especially in this instance where you're looking at federal employees and retirees. On LinkedIn, when you do targeting, you can target people by their job sector. You can target by job title. You can target by, um, you know, their position in their company, their kind of company. Um, so you can get really granular with it on LinkedIn. Meta platforms is a little less specific, but it's still the same concept of being able to reach specific people who you wouldn't be able to reach otherwise. Um, 
In terms of creative, it's really important, again, to think about the various platforms that you will be utilizing. Um, so planning for multiple image sizes for desktop, for mobile, making sure that the experience that your audience has is one that promotes them coming back. Um, so just making sure it's like the user experience is as seamless as possible, which doesn't have to be a huge lift. Um, tools like Canva, which makes everybody a designer, um, can really help, you know, get those dimensions right to make sure the experience is pleasant for the user, for the audience. Next slide, please. Like I said, um, there are various platforms that you can use for paid advertising. LinkedIn, like I said, is probably the most effective when it comes to this kind of, you know, this kind of audience that we're trying to curate. Um, other platforms that you can do paid advertising on include YouTube, Meta ads, Google ads. You can you can do paid marketing on Twitter or X, but you know, depending on who you ask, um, might be recommended, might not be recommended, depending on your organization. Um, another section that you can do is email marketing. Uh, that does require a higher uh, investment in terms of it, it's quite expensive to do efficient email marketing is what I'm trying to say. Um, but the returns from that are really, really great. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so like we said, planning and scheduling your CFC outreach is really important, really utilizing your staff and making sure everybody's roles are clear. Um, making sure communication, especially with whoever is overseeing your marketing is really clear so that your message is presented clearly and it's not um, you know, a surprise for somebody who gets an ad versus who like goes to the site and then they're like, why doesn't this match up? It should match up, it should be cohesive and that's where communication between staff is really important. Next, targeting and cultivating your audience is really thinking through what they want to see. Who are the people that you're trying to reach? What would what would they want to see that would get them interested in what you're doing? So it's a really big a really big part of this whole thing is trying to figure out what your value add for the audience that you want to gain is. So basically, if they see your ad, why should they click on it? Why should they learn about your organization? You know, really giving them a reason, and that again builds the relationship to make it more sustainable, to make sure that the next time the CFC comes around, these are people who are already in your organic following. Um, next is making sure you connect effectively. Always give your CFC, give it your CFC number and your pledge link. Um, keeping tabs on results so you can pay attention to what works and what doesn't work. Um, that's another thing with paid advertising is it's very dynamic. Things change day to day and keeping tabs on those results so you can adjust and use your budget in the most efficient way is also highly encouraged. Um, obviously not everybody is a social media guru, not everybody is a designer, not everybody is a marketing person, but there are wonderful, wonderful tools that everybody can use and can learn about. LinkedIn Learning is great for social media marketing courses. Um, there are a lot on YouTube as well. So really would recommend if you don't have you know, or even if you do have a specific team that's working on this stuff, just honing those skills so you can use them most efficiently. Next slide, please. So just to talk you through what the impact of paid advertising can do, um, just wanted to present with you guys a case study of some of the partners that we work with um, at CHC one of our nonprofit partners. So basically we do promote our partners through print and digital advertising, as well as email marketing. We have done so for the last eight years. Last year, we increased the budget, the marketing budget of our one of our big partners tenfold. So we really invested in marketing. Um, and so, what happened is that the overall CFC declined by 3.6% last year, happens. However, this partner that we increased our budget for saw results that doubled, that increased by double digit numbers. So like huge increases, really meaningful, really impactful increases that are directly related to effective marketing. Um, 
again, it's like depends on what your budget is, how much you can put in in terms of time, effort, cost, staff. Um, and taking note of those things like Jillian had mentioned at the beginning are really important. But it is there is a, a lot that can be done. Um, and I just wanted to talk about this so you guys can see, you know, that it does work. It does it does happen and it does work. I think I have one more slide. Yeah. So we have for our nonprofit partners um, a toolkit to help them with CFC resources. There are also CFC resources on the CFC website. Again, LinkedIn Learning is a great tool um, to look at and to learn how to most you know, effectively market your organization and your causes. Um, yeah, and that's paid advertising in a nutshell. Thank you. I think I'm passing. I think it's to me now. Okay, to Jennifer, great. <laughs> The great thing about this uh, presentation is that we really are bouncing off of each other in various um, in various items, such as I'm going to be talking about donor communication. So donors are the reason our organizations continue to be able to assist those in need at every level. Without them, we would not be able to do the good works that we are doing. Donor communication is essential also as retaining your current donor is generally more cost effective in the long run than getting new donors. But also you want to maintain that donor communication with your new donors as well, because you want to make sure that they're communicated to in order to make sure that they stay as opposed to being a one year or one time donor. So I'm going to be focusing on utilizing your available resources, maintaining contact, and focusing on current events. Next slide. First, even though sometimes you may take a look at what you have and don't think you have much available to you, you have so many resources. The very first is the CFC Donor Acknowledgement Report. I know a lot of charities tend to be really leery of reaching out to their CFC donors because of the rules and regulations. However, the rules are when you get down to it, pretty simple. Don't solicit to their work. Don't email their work email addresses. Donors should be giving out their personal email addresses, but all you need to do is just double check for a .mil, a .gov, um, a restricted email address. The federal government is not going to be using a Gmail or a Yahoo or especially AOL for work address or email address for an employee. If somebody gives you a Yahoo email account, they are, and they've released their information to you, you are allowed and encouraged to reach out. Especially like, and you need to do it during very key times, such as remembering to thank your donors in late summer or September is key to getting returning donors. And don't just go back to last year, take a look uh, the system goes back all the way to 2017. You may take a look at somebody who donated to you three years ago, but they didn't donate last year. Was there a communication sent out? If there wasn't, that might be the reason. They may have gone, well, I'm not being thanked, or I, I didn't, I don't know what my donation was actually used for. So they may have with, decided not to donate to you. But charities who continue to stay in touch with their donors throughout the campaign, sending emails during key moments, such as Giving Tuesday or the midway point through the campaign, will see retention and growth. The CFC itself sees bumps when they send out email communications to their federal workers and military workers. Email campaigns generally have a large impact but can be expensive. So depending on how large your donor lists are, one of the things I wouldn't do is utilize something like Outlook. Um, my organization has learned the hard way in the last decade that if you send out a lot of emails in, through Outlook at the same time, you're gonna be marked as a spammer. So you need to take a look at what you have available and what you have the budget for. If you have a list of 10,000 people you would like to thank, I would not use Outlook. I would look at something like MailChimp 
which is not an endorsement. It's the one I could only remember when I was writing my notes. But something like MailChimp, it is specifically designed to do mass mailings. One of the things about the acknowledgement reports that you get, however, is only about, and I think this might be a little off, but it's only about 20% of the CFC donors give out their personal details. Most donors simply decide it's why they love the CFC. They can donate anonymously and then not get bombarded with like newsletters or mail sent to their house. As of today, the initial deadline for submitting the listing information was August 16th, but there's a late deadline with a late submission fee. Part of the listing fee, or sorry, the listing information that is collected is the care letter. So if you want to potentially reach those other 80% of federal workers who do not give out their personal information, this is possibly the only way you're ever going to communicate with them unless they happen to be at a charity fair. Um, this care letter is a thousand, um, a thousand characters long, including spaces, and it is used every year as a thank you letter from your president, CEO, executive director, somebody from the top, thanking the donor and explaining what you all have accomplished within the last year with um, various donations. Um, and it is one of the best ways to reach those donors. This is also free along with the listing fee, but there's no extra funding you need to set aside to do the care letter. All you need to do is like 20 minutes, get it approved by marketing, get it approved by your CEO, and upload it to, or copy and paste it into the CFC application site. Um, getting an immediate thank you when somebody submits an online donation is priceless. Like, and they can immediately see that you, uh, the charity is thinking of their donors even if they decided not to release their information and they get to see a bit of information about what all has been happening within your organization and programs. Another thing that many charities do who do really well in the campaign is that they utilize their website and social media throughout the campaign and beyond. We're not just talking about putting your EIN number on your website. That should be your bare minimum is to have your EIN number on your website. The next minimum is making sure you have your CFC number um, on your website. And also, and I'm gonna touch on this again in a second, the CFC has available uh, downloadable approved CFC logos that you can download and it will say CFC approved charity and it's got several different colors, several different sizes. You could add that to your website. And then take a look at crafting a dedicated workplace giving page um, or section on your website. One of our charity members has an amazing workplace giving uh, site, I'm sorry, page on their, on their site. And it goes through not just the CFC, but the CFC is actually on the very top. They link to where you can, you click on it and it takes you right to the giving site. So if a federal worker is on their website, they don't even have to type in the URL. It's right there. Um, it goes into what the CFC does, how they've um, benefited um, from the pledges. And it's bright, it's cheerful. And it honestly is one of the best pages I think I've seen any of our um, charitable partners put together. Also, successful charities utilize the resources that CFC themselves provide along with their own resources. So like I just said, you can download a CFC approved logo, but there's also more resources through the link I am going to post 
right now. There we go. This will specifically send you to um, the section that is like, instead of for employees, for donors, this is for charities. It's wonderful because there's just so much that you can access here. Um, under the promote yourself and the CFC, there's that's where you can access the CFC logo. You can access this give happy stacked mark um, or the horizontal mark. They have the CFC's QR code that you can put on posters and displays. Um, and you and they walk you through also how to generate your messaging. Sorry, my computer just froze. Here we go. If your organization has um, hasn't utilized these before, I would definitely encourage you to take a look and download these resources. It's things that you can add to your website in under 10 minutes. Also, CFC puts out a lot of social media. Um, I haven't checked to see if they're still on Twitter, but, <laughs> or X, formerly known as Twitter. But um, they put out a lot of social media posts, Facebook, X. Um, and I know sometimes it's really difficult when you are all busy, your marketing team is stretched thin, it's coming up on Giving Tuesday. Utilize what the CFC is already doing. If the CFC has an amazing social media post out there, reshare it. Put it out on your social media and point back to the CFC. Um, they don't want it just sitting in the dark, just waiting um, for you know just their donors uh, and their federal workers to see. They they want charities to also utilize these um, these items that they're putting out there. Speaking of social media, it really, social media, I cannot talk about enough about how key it is, even with Twitter being whatever it is these days. But it is key, it is how so many people, despite their demographics of age, it's how so many people stay connected, both individually and also organizationally. Um, but also it is how current events and how organizations can talk about how they're interacting with current events. That's really where they're going to. Uh, Hurricane, um, nope, not Teppy, um, Barrel, Hurricane Barrel. When Hurricane Barrel slammed into Texas, there was so much need. And I know donors were going to charities, websites, social media pages to see if they were doing any boots on the ground action. And here's the thing, your organization might not have a huge disaster relief or whatever is in the news at the moment, but if you do any work with that, make sure you're talking about it. For example, there are a lot of organizations out there that focus on food and nutrition and poverty that also have a disaster relief aspect. Um, I didn't actually learn that until I started working with America's Charities and several of our members have major disaster relief um, program programs. And uh, one more slide. So ROI, especially with donor communication, can be tricky to figure out. Again, like I said, metrics can be nebulous. They can be scary. But one way, especially with all the reports that are at your fingertips that you can track is making sure your organiz organization first keeps track of whenever you send out a donor communication push, be it email, social media, um, if you put out posters, make sure that is noted and the date is noted. Because once you have those pledge reports, you can then say, okay, well, we sent out a blast 
a week before Giving Tuesday, how do we compare with our giving the next week up to Giving Tuesday versus the week prior? Um, like I said, the CFC themselves will see increases whenever they see and whenever they send out email communication. And it's very likely that you will also see a bump. Um, and then if you put out a commu communication like the week after Thanksgiving and don't see anything, that might be a sign that a lot of your donor specific folks are like out of the office. So you can learn a lot regarding taking your reports and taking the data that you have internally and just really reviewing those numbers. It's sometimes just all about a deep number dive. All of the things I've mentioned are available to you, either because you're in the CFC or internally at your organization with a handful of things that may cost extra. Um, it's definitely, it's just taking a look around and seeing what you have available and a matter of utilizing them to the best of your ability and the best and the best ability of your organization. And now, uh, Jillian, for the rest of it. Done. Uh, yeah, perfect. Um, I'm excited about my section because I feel like it kind of combines what Shalom and Jen were both talking about. So there's some nice synergy here with the with the order. Um, but the final sort of, you know, uh, strategy that I want you all to be thinking about are special solicitations. So a special solicitation is an emergency fundraising window that the CFC opens in the case of extreme disasters or crises. <clears throat> These are relatively new to the campaign. There was one for COVID-19 in 2020, and there was one for the Ukraine conflict in 2022. Uh, and these are really successful opportunities to connect with federal donors, federal employees outside of the traditional CFC window. So, for example, in 2022, during the Ukraine solicitation, $650,000 were raised between April and June. Um, so it's a nice opportunity to not only generate much needed funds for a particular emergency response, um, and and solicit and you know acquire new donors, but it's also really nice because it gives you visibility outside of that traditional CFC window. It's a nice chance to prime your donor audience ahead of that main season. Um, for whatever reason, both special solicitations in the last couple of years have been in the spring. That's just kind of how it's happened. Um, they can open at any time, but uh, it is kind of nice that you know if it is happening in the spring, there's sort of this like lead up to the main CFC. It's a good touch point. It's a good opportunity to sort of get in front of those folks and remind them about who you are and what you're about and the kind of work that you do. Um, I also think it's really nice to connect with these donors outside of the busy fall season, right? There's a lot of asks for their time and dollars during the fall, and the CFC is no exception to that. So being able to take advantage of these sort of like pop-up fundraising opportunities that the CFC presents is a really nice chance for you to just kind of connect with donors, make those asks outside of, uh, outside of the, the busy season. And then like Jen was saying, I'd also be thinking about emergency response during the CFC, right? I'd be thinking about the emergency work you do in general. There's so much generosity and so much interest around disaster response and emergencies amongst donors um, that like we should be taking advantage of that, right? So because if you're in the usual or the typical CFC window um, and an emergency or a crisis happens, the CFC isn't gonna do any concerted pushes the way they do around special solicitations, but that doesn't mean that you can't. So if there's a disaster between that September, January timeframe, really be thinking about how you want to factor that into your overall CFC messaging. The answer to this will depend on each individual, you know, organization. It depends on things like your, you know, existing CFC communications plan, the scope and scale of the emergency, your level of response, how visible you are in that response, your team's capacity to pivot messaging, especially during the times of the crisis. So these are all the things that I, I kind of want everyone thinking about. Next slide. So. How do we leverage these windows if slash when they open and, and are available to us, right? 
Um, obviously, the key thing is to just really communicate your role in that response. Like Jen was saying, you know, if you're a food and nutrition organization, but you do some emergency work, make sure that your donors know that. Donors don't know what you're doing unless you're telling them about it. So really be sure to think through what are concrete updates that we can share on, you know, where we're working, what we're doing. Do you have any goals for the number of people you're trying to reach, number of supplies you're trying to distribute, those kinds of things. Uh, and remember, when you're doing this communication, keep your language very specific to the CFC audience. It's nice to really tailor it and really, you know, speak to federal employees and retirees and let them know that you're really thinking about them when you're doing this outreach. Educate the donor on the special solicitation. These don't happen often. So, you know, helping them kind of understand what it's about when the window is open, give them details on how long it's active, why a donor might choose to give to you during this time, but also give through the CFC. Um, don't forget to share your CFC code when you're doing this. Um, and if you have any, you know, sort of like relevant content to share that's up on the CFC virtual charity fair page, I'd also try leveraging that. So you're kind of getting those donors onto the CFC site. When a special solicitation opens, the CFC is really good about putting out materials to help you sort of prep and think through, you know, what does this solicitation look like? How could you be messaging to donors? How does it work? Um, so keep an eye on that. But also, I expect most of you are in a federation charity. Your federation also is going to have resources and recommendations for you. So really be tapping that, that federation connection that you have when a special solicitation opens. Just make sure that you're kind of thinking through everything that, that you can during this window. Make your plan um, for email, depending on how long the special solicitation is. Plan to send a couple emails to donors. Um, that, you know, your flow kind of let people know, hey, special solicitation is open. Here's information on how it works and how we're responding to this crisis. And this is why it's really important. Uh, and then, you know, kind of give updates on your work. Please give to us through the special solicitation so we can accomplish A, B, and C together. Uh, and then do reminders at the close, you know, if the, the window is going to close. This is your chance, federal employees, to really um, give back and, and contribute during this time. Consider other marketing tools. So like Jen was talking about, you know, I'm a really big fan of having workplace giving pages on your website too. It's just such a great opportunity to get that information. And it's likely that you already have some of this. I see a lot of charities that have matching gift language, which I love to see, but also be thinking about how you can kind of expand on that to include the CFC audience um, and use that that section to add language about the special solicitation. Let them know that that's like a window that's open. So if they've come to you and they're looking at your response and then they're looking for ways to give, you're kind of helping reinforce that message of, yes, I, I that's right, I can support through the CFC, I can support through this, this special window that's open. Uh, visit the CFC's channel to see how they're talking about the special solicitation on social media and plan a few posts over that window just to reach federal employees on social. I'm also a really big fan of just kind of tagging along to what the CFC is already doing. Like Jen said, it's an easy way to make sure that you're getting in front of the right audience instead of just kind of blasting things out into the ether. Um, but the folks who follow CFC are the folks who are likely donors to the CFC. So being able to reply or reshare um, and I also recommend kind of diving into the zones as well. That some of the zones do their own social promotion. So if your, you know, headquarters is, is located in a particular zone or there's a zone where you really tend to get a lot of support, um, you can kind of find that information in, in your pledge data. And, and, and Chris with TAS was speaking about that earlier, you know, kind of do that lead work and think through, you know, are there zones where we really want to keep an eye on their social media pages and really promote our work to that specific audience? That's a great opportunity. Um, and then going back to what Shalom was saying about paid advertising, you know, emergencies are a really fantastic opportunity to leverage the chance to raise more dollars, but also acquire new donors. And the CFC is really no exception to this. So, you know, if you have advertising funds, that aside for emergencies, I'd consider doing, you know, do some testing and do some test paid promotion targeting federal employees. Conversely, if you've got a CFC advertising budget, consider taking some of that and playing around with emergency messaging and emergency language during this. Um, you can always try things and see how it goes and see what sticks. 
right? Um, it doesn't have to be all or nothing, but like setting aside uh, a portion of your budget to sort of start playing with these things might help give you data and give you insight into how do we want to take our emergency work and, and build on that in, in advertising. And I'll just say, you know, when I think about the special solicitation, I mean, we work with charities that have been really considerate in their targeted outreach to federal employees and are just really clear about this is what we're doing and this is why giving through the special solicitation is really important. Like this is the impact that it has. Um, we saw huge increases for Ukraine, for the charities that were really uh, dedicated to setting aside time to, to reach out to those donors. We had a lot of charities anecdotally in Global Impact. We have a, a lot of international charities that were responding in Ukraine. Um, and a lot of them did see donations come through during the special solicitation, but it was really the ones who took the time to send donors an email or two saying, hey, you know, this is the work we're doing and this is why uh, this is why it matters and you can give to us through the CSB again. And then I'll also say in looking back over our 2023 data, a lot of our charities were responding to the crisis in Gaza and Israel this past fall that continues to this day. And we saw huge increases and that really bucked the trend in overall CFC giving numbers because they were really out there telling federal employees at events, in email communications, on their website, on social, hey, you know, this is the work we're doing. This is the impact we're having. Federal employees, you can make a difference by giving at your, your workplace campaign, the CFC this fall. Um, and so we just saw, you know, massive increases uh, for those organizations that were really able to, to message that. So just wanted to kind of put that plug in for both the special solicitation window and just your general CFC messaging, really letting people know the work you're doing as it relates to current events and things that donors are passionate about, things that people are reading about and want to connect with. So, all right, last slide. We're going to open it up for discussion. Um, Jen, Shalom, and I are happy to answer any questions you may have. I was thinking about things as Jen and Shalom were talking, so like I could kick us off happily of, of things and comments I have, but um, really want to make sure that this is useful for you all and, and give you guys a chance to, um, to pick our brains, think through anything that's come up, anything we've said that may have sparked an idea. So just feel free to come off mute and, and jump on in. I received some questions via the chat. So Perfect. if you don't mind, I'll, I'll kick this off. Um, Please do. That's how much of an advertising budget could be impactful if we're a local charity? Shalom, I'll kick that over to you. Yeah. So I think it really depends on, first of all, if you're a local charity, I think it really depends on looking at organically what your reach looks like. So who do you already reach and what is the, you know, the monetary, you know, what is, what does it take for you to reach who you already reach? And then how much do you want to scale that? And then I think it really varies, you know, by nonprofit, how much you have based on what you, where you start, if that makes sense. So really thinking about what, what portion, it's just not like a one size fits all kind of question or like when it comes to how much money should we spend on advertising? Um, I don't know if that's if that's like a an answer that works. How do we feel? No, I agree. I I think you're a hundred percent right. Every organization is so different that the points that you made of looking at their particulars is going to influence their own budget. Right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So my next question was, can we edit the care letter once it's been submitted with the listing? I think, Curtis, that my, I think the answer is no. Once the listing has been paid. Is that correct? I'm not sure myself. That I'm is almost correct. positive yeah. you're correct. Yeah. yeah, I I believe that once that care letter is submitted, that's your annual chance to get that 
acknowledgement out to donors. And then you have a chance the following year to go back and revisit that and, and submit a new letter. So the listing information is available <clears throat> for charities to edit and update from the time you get your approval email to the deadline that they set this year is August 16th with the late, um, the late one being August 30th. Okay, perfect. Um, another question was, are there sample ads in the resource section? I don't, okay, so I'm not certain if on the CFC site, the resources will give you specific ads. Um, I do think that's also a bit tricky because the way you set up the ads really varies by platform. Um, so that's another another piece where I would really recommend the LinkedIn learning, the YouTube crash courses side of things, because, you know, while it is like a specialized skill, we all have phones and we are all on the internet and the internet is so big. Um, and the fact of the matter is that if you know what you need to do for each platform, depending on which you use, you can really make it happen. So I don't think there are, I don't think sample ads would be, you know, it's not so much there's an ad, just insert your name. But I do think if you find out how to specifically make ads for the platform that you want to work on, um, and there are many resources, like I said, that can help you do that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Canva. They've got really great templates, like Shalom said. Um, Capwing also has a lot of really great tools. They're more on the video editing side, but if you want to like make GIFs and use GIFs and ads, those tend to do really well. Um, and then, yeah, I think uh, the key thing is really including that CFC logo and having your CFC number and really be intentional about where you're sending folks in the ad. You know, think, do you have a workplace website that you're sending them to or are you sending them to the CFC? That's great, but sending them to like a generic donate page when you're telling them to give through the CFC, that's not gonna that's not gonna make sense to the donor. So just as long as you're thinking about that audience in mind and taking advantage of free tools online, there's a ton that you can do. Uh, and then again, if you're in a federation and, and you want help and you want support, I mean, Global Impact, we work with our charities all the time on advertising and, and are happy to, to support if that's something that's available to you. I just want to add really quickly, when it does come to like creative for ads, it's not super different from what you would be posting organically. The side of it that like the marketing side of it is more the targeting. So who is going to see what you're making when it comes to general, you know, creative assets, like Jillian was saying that you can make in Canva or in Capwing or in any of these tools. I think making sure that all your information is put in a digestible, you know, pleasant to look at way on that piece of creative is the more, that is the, the part that everybody can do regardless of budget. Then when it comes to like the ads side of it, that is who are you trying to reach? How much can you invest in reaching these people? All right, the next question is, what do I link our website CFC button to? So it drives people directly to our CFC giving page. Let me grab that link. Hang on a second. And I will try not to send it just to Curtis this time. I think it forces you to. I think we can't chat everybody. So if you can send it to Curtis, then Curtis can give it to everybody. I'll pop it in. Yeah. Okay. So oh, you're right. That for that. Yeah, I tried to find a way to give you all access to everyone, but it's not letting me, unfortunately. I was asking Kevin to perform miracles in the private chat. <laughs> Didn't know I was very happen. furiously Googling. Oh, I'm like, all right, how can I make this happen? And it doesn't seem like it's a thing. All right, Jennifer just passed it to me. So there you go. It's in the chat. Uh, all right, the next uh, question we have is, where do we find the, uh, the pledge link? So it's the same thing. I'm sorry. Um, are there ways to target specific agencies? I think that would be a matter of taking your donor acknowledgement reports. Um, however, just off the top of my head, I think the really true breakdown of uh, departments and agencies, I think that's more coming in come September. Um, but definitely the donor um, acknowledgement report is where you're going to want to go. 
um, because that for your emails, that is going to be all of the people who have said, yes, I want to receive communication from the charities I am donating to. Right. On the paid advert, sorry, Curtis. On the paid advertising side of things, it is possible to um, target specific um, agencies and organizations within the federal government. Um, like I said, you can really, really get granular on LinkedIn by industry. You can also search directly by company or organization. Um, if those departments have separate LinkedIn pages, you can target those directly. So there are also options for that when it comes to paid marketing. And then finally, if you're trying to reach a specific zone and you want to try through social media, you can see if that zone has uh, social media accounts and you can try to engage with them uh, there just as another suggestion. I have a question. I try to get into the CFC Charities Join website for virtual and in-person events, but it won't let me in. I don't know why. Is that the participate in CFC events register now? Yeah, uh, I was just, I thought maybe I would go on and just get signed up now so that, you know, they could email me and let me know when they have selected me for a virtual or in-person charity event on um, base. I, unfortunately, so I, I just went to make sure the link was like actually working um, and currently is for me. Um, so I am not sure why you aren't able to get in. Let me put the direct link. I'll send it to Curtis if he can then share that. That is the okay. direct link to the invitation registration page. While you all are on, I'm going to try to get in and that way I'll know if it's working for me. Okay. If it's coming. There you go. Um, all right. Another question is about the August 16th deadline for listing requirements and uploading the CFC logo. Um, was that just for technical things like care statement or does it also apply to the application fees? That was just the care statement uh, and the listing fees. So the application itself and the application fee were due either January 31st or February, I can't remember, I'm sorry, I can't remember if it was leap year this year, the end of February uh, for the late. So if your organization hasn't applied for the 2024 campaign, unfortunately after February, it was too late. Um, but come, uh, it's probably November, December, or I'm sorry, yeah, November, December is when the application will open for the 2025 campaign. Um, I was the one that asked the question and I, I just trying to get clarity. So like my, uh, manager was the one that paid, uh, paid the fee and like did the initial setup. Um, but I'm not sure if he submitted like the care statement or for the letter and like the logo and stuff like that. So I'm wanting to just get clear on whether we can still provide those or are we at, are we limited to that date? If you, if you, your application fee was paid and so your application was submitted, accepted, yes. all that you and your listing fee hasn't already been paid. You can still go into the CFC site, enter your listing information, your care, care, uh, care statement information and, you know, submit and pay for your listing. Um, I believe it's till August 31st. Um, I believe I'd have to double check on that, but you can still submit and pay for that listing information if it hasn't been done already. So it's already been paid, but I just want to make sure that we input all the right information. So we still have time until the 30th to do that. If it's already been paid, unfortunately, I think whatever changes or information was in there is kind of locked in there, kind of locks once you pay. Understood. Okay, thank you. Um, and kind of branching off of that real quick, if there's anybody on the call who has not submitted their listing uh, fee and information, I would urge you to do so um, by the Third, I think it's the 30th. Um, the 31st is Saturday, so you probably don't want to be doing it on the 31st, just so you don't have Good to call. work on the weekend. Um, but that is because if you pay the application fee and you do the app application and submit it, but don't pay the listing fee, you are not going to be shown as a charity in the CFC. So if you have 
any concerns or questions about it, go to the application site. It will tell you immediately if your listing has been paid. Um, <clears throat> if you're with a federation, I'm pretty sure I speak for all federations that the listing fees have been paid already on August 16th. So if you're a federated member, you're fine. But if you're independent or and just don't remember or a little concerned about it, just hop on over to your act account on the CFC website or the application site and just double check. So Jennifer, with that, if somebody wanted to verify their statement, so they log back into the charity site and they can see what they've submitted, is that correct? Yes. Um, so basically when you're on the site, and you go into your app, your application, you're going to see two things that you can click on, more than two things, but you're gonna see like application approved, um, and then you're gonna see listing, and you can click on those to go immediately into those sections. So you can see what you've entered, um, and you can actually see what was entered last year all the way up to 2017. All of that information is kept. So you are able to take a look and see what is what is on there, even if you've already submitted it. All right. I think I have got all the questions in the chat. I apologize if I overlooked anybody's, uh, but please feel free to come off mic uh, or, or come off mute uh, if you want to ask our panelists anything. Okay. I just, I'm in here and I've already signed up. So I'm going to try to submit and see what is, if it's going to let me. I mean, do stuff. Um, it says CFC event guidelines require check to indicate you have read and agreed to follow CFC event guidelines. So I will check that. And let's see if it's going to let me um, submit. Okay, I'm going to try to submit now. If you haven't paid, it won't let you submit. Okay, let's see what it says and see if it received it. It says we are a blank is required. English only. We are a local charity. Um, well, we are national too, but I don't know. You have to pay for all of those. You have to pay for, pay for all of those. Deborah, I'm going to send you an email of someone that you can reach out to who will be able to give you some further support on that. Uh, I see Vicki has her. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Curtis, when does the uh, CFC campaign actually start? September 1 is the opening. So you'll see the website change from 23 to 24 on September 1. And that's when OPM uploads the new list of all approved charities for this year. Um, and then the solicitation period is open from September 1 through January 15th. Thank you. Hey, Curtis, the website says it's actually September 2nd, probably because it's a Monday. September 1st is a Sunday. Oh, the, okay. So, Thank you, Stephanie, yeah. You're welcome. September 1st is actually Labor Day, so it's a federal holiday as well, that Monday. Vicki, if you still had a question, I can go ahead and uh, just ask you to, oh, there you go. All right, I was just waiting. I didn't want to step on anyone's toes. Um, So I do have a question. We're in zone two, um, which is in Hawaii. So in Hawaii, we had four events, but unfortunately, we're one of those nonprofits who are sitting on the fence. Is it really worth continuing with CFC because of the revenue that we're generating? So I was just wondering, are there going to be any more events this year or something, you know, where we can be seen other than, you know, we're promoting it, we're sending out our letters and all. It's just got to be, you know, more bang for the buck, I guess is the best way to put it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's understandable. Uh, I don't know if we have anybody from the Hawaii Pacific zone on here. Anyone can talk about any plans for additional in-person activities? So Vicki, I'm going to send you also in the chat a uh, point of contact to reach out to and uh, definitely talk with them about getting more engaged 
and uh, Thank you. see what they have up their sleeve. All right, appreciate it. Vicki, I'd also, you know, as you're trying to make this decision about like what's right for you investment wise, I would kind of circle back to Jen's donor communication piece and try testing some of that out this fall and see how it goes. If you put in some new strategies this year and see some success with really kind of re-engaging existing donors, that might be the encouragement you need to say um, as you're also trying to think about, you know, what events can you get involved with and things like that. But um, I, I just find it helpful to like test a few new things before making before making those decisions about whether or not staying in the CFC is right for you. Right. We're, we're changing up a few things. And I have to be honest, what helped us out the most last year was the, the fire in Maui. We, we don't want the devastation to be what recruits, you know, the money coming in, but that's what helped us out last year. We're changing up a different things. And unfortunately, because most of our events have been on the Navy base, we're not going to get personal emails. We're not allowed to ask for personal email. So all we get is the donation that comes in through the checking account with no resources of who it came from. Yeah, and that's where I think uh, thinking about your website and having language on there that appeals to the CFC audience is going to be huge. And really kind of trying to build on that attention and that momentum, letting folks know, hey, it's been a year. This is where we're at. This is what the needs still are. And this is what we're doing. And here's the successes we've had um, using your website. Um, I'm not familiar with uh, Hawaii's CFC zone and if they're on social media or not. But if there's any kind of social media activity that you can plug into, kind of using those opportunities to get some visibility, it's hard when you don't get emails. Um, but just trying to think about like, how do I circle around this? How do I add stuff to my website? How do I, you know, think about social media? If you've got a budget for paid advertising, you know, how can we target, you know, those Navy bases? Like thinking about, you know, other ways to kind of reach those folks and let them know, hey, we really appreciated your support last year. Here's all the good work we've been doing. And, and this is the impact that we're having in the community that really needs it right now. Right. Well, I just pulled up in the, there is actually a CFC Hawaii um, Facebook page. So we're going to start linking that in too. And Perfect. the biggest thing is my husband is active duty. So I was like, okay, go to the office and you tell everybody it's starting. <laughs> so that's been the biggest push that I've got. <laughs> yep. Those employee champions are great. We love that. We love taking advantage of spouses. And don't forget that you can even just comment on existing posts. So when they post on that Facebook page, it's even just like replying in the comments and letting folks know that they can come Check out that beautiful new CFC uh, workplace giving website page that the nice folks on the CFC call encouraged you to make. You know, send them there and and have them kind of learn more about you know like this is what we're doing and and this is why you know it's really critical that 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 you give again. So we can comment on their post then. Yeah. I, just, I didn't want to go in there and start you know saying okay come check out Hawaii Habitat when it's on their CFC page and step on toes. Yep, you can do that. Thank you. Um, just to go off what Jillian said, Vicki, I think one, any engagement, engaging with their Facebook pages, any other social media, um, building that like back and forth, not only, you know, ex, you know, expands your audience because now you, people who are looking on their Facebook page are seeing you in the comments, but algorithmically, that's also super helpful. Having that engagement, like redirects people to your stuff. It makes your stuff show up in their feeds more often. Um, the other side that I wanted to touch on is um, regarding most of your donations coming from around a disaster. Obviously, we're not trying to like herald disasters, but I do think it's really a really good opportunity to like craft messaging around impact of your organization, craft messaging around like your mission as it as as it relates to the work you were able to do during the disaster, and then looking at how people like figuring out why should, answering the question rather, we did this work, why should I care about the work that you did, about the people that you helped? Why should I, do you know what, do you understand what I'm saying? Like answering that question so that when people are looking at your charity and considering your charity, it's not just related to one disaster, you know, really being able to like weave the messaging so it all kind of comes together to put a megaphone on your mission overall. Right. And in our organization, because we're the ASO, so in a nutshell, we're the mortgage department. So we raise the funds to be able to give the 0% interest home loans to the buyers or where we're rebuilding the houses. We're the ones that raise the fund to be able to give them here and you've got an interest-free loan. 
So we're, we're like the middleman. So we, we push that really hard that without us, they can't get these 0% interest loans. They can't get the 2% interest on home loans to be able to rebuild and be back in their homes. Something that might help you then over there, and you can let me know if I'm off base, but just generally as an idea, we sharing stories, not only from, um, you know, people that you've helped, but something that we did is sharing profiles of people who did give being like, why did you give? Why okay. do you literally answering that question, but from people who did donate, maybe that's you put something on your social media that says, hey, if you're interested in letting us know why you support our organization in the CFC, fill out this little form. And that doesn't have to be like collecting email addresses. You know what I mean? That can literally be, did you donate? Yes, no. If you did, why? And then taking those answers and using them for like social posts, messaging, your website, et cetera. I like that. Thank you. No problem. That can also be part of your email communication too, asking your previous donors, why have you donated to us in the past? Mm. And then when you get those answers, you can take a look at especially those those folks who may not be currently donating and seeing why they donated in the past and seeing how you can reconnect them to your current mission and what you're doing now. That works if you have an email list. We don't have I an know. email list. Yeah. Get the email. And, you know, I don't want to just like email blast all our donors in the past and say, hey, start doing it through CFC. <laughs> Um, but also mm -hmm. utilize your husband's ability, like to talk uh, to um, like his his fellow um, like military folks. My dad is a retirement agency, um, thirty plus years, and he meets up with it's his term, not mine. His old man breakfast at least once a month, and it's all retirees of various federal. And you better believe come August, September, I'm like, remind them about the CFC. I am already pushing that on my dad. And he's like, I know, because um, he still donates. So definitely, that's another thing. Use use your personal connections. I think I think that's great. He gets voluntold a lot. Um, He's part of the most <laughs> of officers club. And I'm like, don't forget, it's starting. <laughs> so. We have time for one more question. And Robert has had his hand up. So I'm going to Give it to him. Well, I was actually just going to respond to Vicky. Absolutely. Yes. And imagine what that background of yours, Hawaii Habitat for Humanity would look like if it also had a CFC logo and said, find us in the combined federal campaign. We do the marketing for you. We have implemented a whole bunch of recommendations. We established a work group. We made a whole bunch of recommendations, Vicki, to OPM that we hope to see come to fruition in this year and next year mm -hmm. and maybe as late as the following year. But there are really, really, really great reasons to stay with the CFC. And even if you're not getting the return on investment now, we foresee that the IT costs are going to be covered outside of the CFC soon, we hope. Um, and if that's the case, then you are going to see a lot more of the donor dollars winding up in your bank accounts. Because if we can eliminate the IT costs, from everything that we do, we have made strives to get more dollars to the donors, just like the CFC 50 commission wanted. Every donor dollar in your bank account. That's our goal. Okay, Mr. Jennings, I have one quick question and this one is really quick. How can I get a t-shirt like that? Because that's free advertising. If I pick by the T-shirt, a couple of them, and I wear them seven days a week, that's free advertising right there. Well, with the, with the new rules, uh, we had to change how we purchased uh, swag and logo and stuff like this. This was purchased by me locally. We we did a um, an order that all of us signed up for, and so we had to order these out of our own pocket. Oh yeah, I'm, I want to pay. I, I don't I don't know who has that right now. This was like 10 years ago. So but I am free to go out and get a company that sell T-shirts and get my own design like that. Right. 
you can you cannot do it for profit because this is a copyrighted logo um but you are certainly it is public use um curtis i don't think there's any restrictions on people getting their it's own my, it's to raise money for my charity for community projects off of that if i see it it's free if i just wear it for myself as a regular right. apparel yeah people that's free advertising and people ask well what does that mean i said well you know uh, the, uh, the the command federal campaign was set up by um, President John Kennedy, but it's also to help the communities, you know, and charities yeah. sign up. And, you know, my organization is a charity and that's that's what, you know, we're here for to help in the local communities and national. Yeah, you're, you're free to use the CFC logo as long as you're an approved charity. You can have it on any marketing uh, product, including T-shirts, polos, whatever. Okay, great. So I can buy, I, I know a company. So what I can do is just have them to design a logo like his, use your logo, you know, the CFC's logo and just put it in a t-shirt, not for selling, but for me to wear it every day. Perfect. But if I was to sell it and people buy it, it would still go to my particular service, you Debra, know, that I Debra, for the community. Debra, Debra, you but I'm not going to do, do it. Don't, don't say what you don't want others to hear. You right. cannot do that. <laughs> That's right. I agree. I won't do that. I won't do it anyway. <laughs> but given Debra's enthusiasm, quick reminder, Jen said this too, but if you go to givecfc.org and click for charities, they've got some good resources. That's where you can download the logo. They've also got like graphics and templates and stuff. So be sure to check that out. There's tons of stuff that you can use and they've got helpful advice on, you know, like how do you really leverage this? And um, okay. so I, I'd spend some time poking around that page before before the busy fall season is upon us. This, okay, this may be a you. topic that the foundation board wants to address um, since uh, since it appears that it's lacking. So more to come. Okay. Thank you all so much. I'm gonna give a I have one more. Uh, we Sorry. Only I, just, left. I was just going to say, um, like Vicki, your background, switching out your you know, your logo for CFC season with a CFC logo with your pledge number. Great idea. Would recommend. That's all. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Have a blessed day, everyone. Gillian, Jennifer, Shalom. Perfect job. We appreciate you. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all.